Right then, quick refresher on refraction. When we send light through a substance, let's say like this perspex block, refraction occurs. And this is when the light slows down and bends when traveling through that different medium. If it's a medium that's more dense, it slows down. If it's less dense, it speeds up. And that's refraction. Now it's not just blocks like this that can refract. What we're going to be looking at is lenses. And here I've got a lens that's curved just like that on both sides. And we call that type of lens a convex lens. Or sometimes referred to as a converging lens. And the reason we call it a converging lens is because of what it actually does to light. So here I've got a beam of light going through this, and if I change where I'm sending the light through on, we can see that it also causes the light to refract. But we can see that it's pretty much refracting and all focusing to the same point, just about there. And that is what we call the focal point. And this is why it's called a converging lens. Because it makes the light all converge, all come together at one particular point. So that's why it's called a converging lens. Convex lens, a converging lens. So just to show you that in a different way. If we've got light coming in, it all refracts and comes together at one particular point and that point is our focus that point there is what we call the focus where the light all comes together and focuses together at one particular point now the refraction of this light becomes very important for where images actually form because when you look through a lens, just like you do with glasses, with a magnifying glass, with any type of lens, you can see an image. You see the image of what you're looking at. And here's a quick example of what it looks like, the outside, through a converging lens. So here we can see the outside. We've got the trees and everything through the window. Not a great looking day, but you can still see them out there. And with lenses, these lenses here, we're actually able to project the outside onto a piece of paper. So I've got a piece of paper here. Got one of our convex lenses. You can see it's quite curved out. And I'm able to project the image onto this piece of paper. You can make out the outline of the windows, of the trees outside and depending on what lens I use so a different thickness lens there it can change what the image looks like you can make it bigger, make it smaller, make it upside down but I have to change the distance that I hold the lens away from my piece of paper so that's all with these convex lenses so you just saw there our converging lens in action and we've got an image being projected onto a sheet of paper. Now what is actually happening and how we actually can see this in action is by drawing ray diagrams. And to draw a ray diagram we'd have something a little bit like this. There right in the center is my lens, there are my focal points and what we mean by a principal axis that's where we place our object. So any object that we were looking at, for example, a tree that was outside, that is where we put our object. Most objects, for simplicity, we just make them arrows. So there is my object. That there is my object, just a simple arrow. Now to find out where our image actually forms, 
we have to draw some lines, some rays of light coming from this object. And the first ray of light that we draw is right from the top of the object. So a straight line that runs parallel to our principal axis, straight from the top of the object to the lens. Now there's one thing you also should do, an arrow to show that the light is traveling from your object. Now as we saw with our little lens, that this lens causes the light to go through this focus. So you draw a line that shows it traveling right down to the focal point. Now that's one ray. The second ray that we draw is right through the center of our lens. And just to show you what actually happens if we shine light through the center of our lens, which I have here, it refracts at the edge there, travels through the block, refracts at the edge again, and comes out pretty much on the same path that it went in at. So you see that there, it goes right through the center of our lens, and pretty much continues the way it went in. So when we're drawing our next ray, our second ray is one that goes straight through the center, but as we saw, there's pretty much no deviation of the light. So we just draw it from the top of our object straight through. There we have those two lines crossing. And that is where our image is formed. Now, it is upside down because our light travelled from the top of our object. So that there, where the lights cross, must also be the top. Now this is our image. This image is what we call a real image. And the reason we call it a real image is because it's made from these actual real light rays. I will talk about one other ray that you can draw, not really needed, but if you wanted to make sure you were doing everything correct, a third optional ray is one that goes from the top of the object again through the focus on this other side of your lens and then when it hits the center draw it parallel to your principal axis. And that one there should also meet at the same point. So that's a third ray you can do. Personally, I would forget about it and just focus on those two rays. One straight from the top of your object, parallel to your principal axis, goes down through the focal point. One from the top, straight through the center, where those lines cross, you have your image. And this one we call a real image because it's made from the actual light rays. Now there's something else we can tell about this image. Looking at this diagram, my image seems to be about the same size as my object. And the third thing we can say about it is that it's upside down compared to the object. And that's key. Three ways we must describe our image. Is it real or is it virtual, which we'll come on to shortly? Is it the same size? Is it bigger? Is it smaller than the object? And the third thing, is it upright or inverted, upside down? Now that's one type of lens, our convex or converging lens. Here is our second type of lens, which is a concave. So it's got that edge that goes inward there. Here is a concave lens. The lens is actually curving inwards. Now if I try and take and project an image using this, no matter how far in I go, how far out, I'm not actually 
getting an image of the outside projected onto the paper. And we're going to find out exactly why this is and how to draw read diagrams correctly, which you'll need to know for your exam. So those inward bits make it a con cave lens or sometimes referred to as a diverging lens. The reason we call it a diverging lens is because it makes the light diverge. So if I shine light in here, see the light spreads out, it diverges, it goes all the way out and spreads out. So this one here the light is not going to all meet at one particular point. There's no focal point that we can see. Well, at least not what we'd call a real focal point. But there is a focal point which we call a virtual focal point. And a virtual focal point works a little like this. We have our light rays coming into our concave lens. When they hit the lens, they all diverge and spread out. But if we trace each of these rays backwards to where they would appear to be coming from, if these rays didn't refract and these were just actually traveling in straight lines, if we trace these rays back, we can see where the light would appear to be coming from. So if we trace that ray back there to there to there, they do all meet at a particular point. And that's what we refer to as our virtual focal point. The reason we call it virtual is because it's not where the rays really are. It's only where they would appear to be. If we trace them back, that's where they appear to be. So that's why we refer to that one as the virtual focal point. And, again, there's a way we do images for these. How we do our particular ray diagrams. Which is in a very, very similar way. In fact, you draw the very same rays as we did before. We've got our virtual focus right there. So if I draw on my object again. Which is my object. Two rays, one from the top, parallel again to my principal axis, make sure I have an arrow head on there, but this time the light diverges, and it all diverges from this focal point, this virtual focus. So the light would appear to be coming from back there where it diverged from and heads off like that. My second ray, just like it was in my previous example, I draw straight through the center. From the top, straight through the center, like it does. And again, it has very little to no deviation. Now this time we can see our rays cross here. So that is where our image is. There is our image. Now this image, is it real or is it virtual? Well, let's have a think about it. It's made from this ray, which is a real light ray. But it's also made from this virtual light ray. The light isn't actually coming from there. The light's coming from the top of the object and heading off that way. We're just tracing it back to where it seems to be coming from, somewhere back there. So because of this, because it's made of a virtual ray, this is a virtual image. Remember the other two ways we have to describe this? Whether it's real or virtual is one thing. The second, whether it's bigger or smaller, in this case smaller. And whether it's upright or upside down. In this case, it is upright by comparison to the object. So that's our two lenses, concave and convex.
how we draw these rear diagrams, how we describe these images, and all of this, it's a high probability that you need to know about this, especially for your exam. Do ask me any questions. If you have any, I'll be pleased to answer them. Thank you.